Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, Jumma Mubarak, another Friday for us. Uh, alhamdulillah, we all made it here together. Uh, let's just get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And alhamdulillah, na'uzu billah min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. May yahdihillahu falamudillala. Wa may yuddil falahadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu. Wa adahu la sharika la. Wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanatuku allaha haqqa tukatihi. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas attaku rabbukum lazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida. Wa khalaka minha zawjaha. Wa batha minhuma rijalin kathiran wa nisaa. Wa attaku allaha allazi tusa'aluna bihi wal arham. Inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanatuku allaha wa kulu kawlan sadida. Yuslih lakum amal lakum. Wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum. وَمَنْ يَتِّيَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا All thanks and praise are due to Allah. We seek His help and His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness to this, there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. And O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them men and women. And fear Allah through whom you ask one another and the wombs. And verily, Allah is ever watching over you. And O you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will amend for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. My dear brothers and sisters, today I'd like to continue our journey into learning about the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we'll talk about the next three names in this series. And those three names are Al-Hafiz, Al-Muqit, and Al-Hasib. A reminder to myself first and then to all of you listening is that we seek to learn from these names of Allah not just to increase us in knowledge about our creator, but also to bring us closer to him. In some of these names, we have a share in them, meaning we can try and emulate these qualities in our own personal lives to help us become better individuals. In other cases, we have to rely on metaphors to help us understand the attribute because we are unable to emulate that which the attribute represents. And today, you know, one of those names uh, falls into that category. And in today's khutbah, You'll notice that the three names or the three attributes we'll discuss, Al-Hafiz, Al-Muqit, and Al-Hasib, have a common thread of preservation, power, and protection. That's the common theme in these three names. And as we discuss each of these today, I invite you to think about how carefully we consider the meaning of words. For example, when we read the Quran, how often do we reflect on each and every verse that we recited? Not just the Arabic portion of it, but just if you can read Arabic and you can understand it, uh, do you reflect on the words, the meaning? Why are those words in their translation or in the Arabic stitched together in that specific order? Do we simply gloss over the verses just so we can move on to the next verse and say, Alhamdulillah, I read the Quran uh, today or this month or this week? Or do we stop to reflect on why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said something or why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referenced specific people in the Quran? And that's just food for thought for all of us, myself included. Uh, let's start with the first of these names I'd like to talk to you about today, which is Al-Hafiz. The meaning of this name is the preserver, the one who protects. Now, the root word of Hafiz is Ha-Fa-Za, which means to preserve, to guard, to take care of, to prevent from perishing, to retain, and to be watchful. To understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the best of preservers, the perfect preservers, let's dive into the word preservation and its meaning. For anything to reserve to receive preservation, two things must happen. First, it must exist, which means it must have been created. And secondly, it must have the ability to perpetuate itself. That is, it must be able to continue to exist. For any creation to continue to exist, it must have some means to protect itself or reproduce or recreate itself. To continue to exist, is also the opposite of being annihilated. So to be annihilated is to no longer exist and therefore no longer be preserved or receive preservation. To continue to exist 
it must have the ability to protect itself too from that which seeks to annihilate it from existence, or it must be able to be recreated. In other words, for anything to persevere, it must have the ability to guard itself from anything that seeks to cause it harm, or it should have some mechanism to be recreated. If we think of fire and water, they're opposites of one another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created both fire and water. If fire does not meet with water, both will continue to exist. If fire does meet with water, then either the fire will be overcome or water will overcome. So to say differently, the balance between water and fire is removed if one prevails over the other. When water is overpowered by fire, it will turn into steam, which becomes part of the air. And if water overpowers fire, it's just, it just gets extinguished. However, both fire and water can be recreated because of the systems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created within nature to allow for their recreation and consequently their preservation. So for example, to start a fire, there could be a natural event like say a lightning striking a tree uh, or fire could be started by igniting a stove. Its creation is possible even when it is not visible. And similarly, water can be created by a natural event like rain, for example or it could be dug up by digging a hole underground. So underground wells, for example. And both fire and water also serve a necessary function as well. In fact, we could argue that they both serve vital functions for us. For example, without fire, we won't have heat. And why is that necessary? Well, heat protects us from cold. Without heat from fire, we could suffer from overwhelming cold. And I'm sure some of us in this winter season uh, especially in the colder parts of the country, welcome that kind of heat. And just like fire and water opposites, hot and cold are also opposites of one another. Fire can be extinguished by water and having water heated by fire allows us to take a warm bath. So fire allows us to enjoy not only a hot meal and remove any organism that would damage our body, it also provides you know, additional functions. So even within our body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the means of preservation. Let's take food as an example. So using our stomach, which is part of our digestive system, we make use of the nutrients that are contained in various foods. So that apple or that banana or whatever other food that we might consume has value to our body, has value for us to be preserved, our cells to be preserved. And for the human body to be preserved, our digestive system processes the food to draw out the nutrients that our cells need to support the other systems in our body. Systems like, you know, for example, the cardiovascular system, which pumps blood throughout the body and blood carries the nutrients, which gets consumed by other parts of the body. And beyond just the transportation of nutrients to feed our cells, and I promise I'm not turning this into a biology lessons of any kind, uh, but the point I want to drive is the human body has an immune system that protects the body from viruses and bacteria that will damage our organs and other vital systems. And we don't have to be watchful over these systems, alhamdulillah. We don't have to watch our internal organs for these signs of viruses or bacteria. The systems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in our bodies are able to work together and make sure that we continue to remain functional. And these mechanisms rely on the availability of energy, which is also produced by our body to operate our organs. And these organs in return lets our body fight off these invaders and preserve our life. So the theme here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made sure that we as humans and all these other things around us are able to continue to be preserved, continue to be, uh, you know, continue to perpetuate themselves. And internally, so many systems participate in making sure that our continued preservations, uh, preservation happens until the day we all die. And, and inshallah, you know, that, that taste of death will be for all of us. And we don't have to do anything special to our body for these systems to take care of us. And that's the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, eating good food, rich in nutrients, Alhamdulillah, that's awesome. That's very helpful for the human body. However, these systems within us know how to take care of ourselves. Now, beyond that, the human being is not just pre preserved from internal annihilation in the way of bacteria and viruses. We're also susceptible to annihilation from external events. You know, think about weather changes, for example, or wild animals maybe on the prowl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us ears, for example, to listen for creatures that can cause us harms. Um, we have been given eyes so that we can examine our surroundings to determine if there's an immediate threat present. And we have a mind that can process the audio and visual cues to quickly fill in any blanks if there's danger. We also have legs that can take us away from immediate danger by allowing us to just run away. 
and we have arms to fight off any attacking creature or to climb tall structures to just uh, get away from whatever threat that might be. Uh, or we can use our arms and legs to just kind of keep ourselves uh, you know, moving so that we can stay warm if, it, if the weather's too cold. Uh, and the list goes on and on and on. And there's so many ways in which Allah has given us the means to preserve our well-being and also Allah give us the means to protect ourselves so that we can continue to produce and recreate. The next name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I like to talk about is Al-Mukit, the nourisher, the feeder, the one who has the power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of nutrition and the one who delivers nutrition to bodies as food and to hearts as knowledge. The root word of Mukit is um, kaf wow ta, which means to feed, to nourish, to supply, to sustain, and to preserve. Now, the meaning of Al-Mukit is like another name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we talked about some time ago. And that name is Al-Razak, the provider. When we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Razak, we are saying that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the means for sustenance and is the provider of sustenance. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides for our every need. And sustenance from Allah can come in two forms. One form is the outward kind, such as the food, the rain, uh, which is meant for the outward representation of Allah's creations. For example, the body. The other kind of nourishment is inner. The inwardly nourishment is for the parts we see and the parts we don't see. So for example, the brain is a part we see and Allah SWT is a nourisher uh, of the mind. Our soul is the part that we don't see and Allah SWT provides nourishment to our soul as Al-Razak. However, Al-Mukit is not synonymous with Al-Razak. So there's a slight difference here. Al-Mukit is the nourisher of all things. That is, Allah is the source of nourishment. So to understand this, we can think in terms of power and knowledge. The one with knowledge has the power to take over anything. So knowledge is a nourishment for the mind, just as food is a nourishment for the body. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of nourishment, such as food and knowledge. So he subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just a provider of sustenance, he is the source of sustenance. As mentioned in Surah Al-Hud, verse six, there is no moving creature on earth whose provision is not guaranteed by Allah. And he knows where it lives and where it is laid to rest. All is written in a perfect record. And there's no activity that we can perform to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a witness. He is aware of all that we do while we are doing it. Not even an atom's weight is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this perfect record that Allah is talking about in this verse also is a reference to um, all of our deeds being recorded. And if you recall from the Quran, there is a mention of on the day of judgment, we presented uh, our book of deeds. If you get your book of deeds in your right hand, then alhamdulillah, you'll be proud and you'll be happy and you'll, you'll scream out loud saying, yes, this is, you know, look at the deeds that I have done. And if you receive your book in the left hand, as we are told in the Quran, then it would be, you know, that, okay, you, you didn't have enough. You were short in a few things. And that is not a place, inshallah, we will find ourselves. So, you know, let's all make dua that we don't find ourselves in that situation as well. So the next name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'd like to talk about today is Al-Hasib, the reckoner the one who suffices. And the root word of hasib is ha, seen, ba, which means to suffice, to be sufficient, or without measure. In Surah Al-Azab, verse 39, we are told, wa billahi hasiba. And sufficient is Allah as a vigilant reckoner. And Allah may be praised and exalted is all one needs. It is inconceivable for any one of us to have a share in this attribute of Allah. And this is what I was alluding to earlier on, is that one of these names uh, is not something that we can, we can try and emulate. Um, and it's something that we can only understand better through examples and through metaphors. So for us to be sufficient means that we have everything we need for our existence and the perfection of our existence. And there's nothing in this universe that at least I can think of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that by itself is sufficient for anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone suffices and all his creations attain their existence from him. When we eat or drink, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created that which we consume for our own existence. We don't say that the grocery store is sufficient for us. The grocery store is merely the source from which we acquired the food or drink that allowed us to continue our existence. 
we also cannot say that the farmer is sufficient for us because the farmer supplied the fruits and vegetables to the grocery store from where we acquired our provisions. And the fruits and vegetables grew from seeds in the field because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the weather and the nutrients in the soil to allow the seeds to grow into food that the farmers can sell. And in this respect, my dear brothers and sisters, even the farmer is not sufficient for themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. And this is mentioned to us in several places in the Quran. And one such place is uh, in Surah Dukan, where we are told in verse 7, Rabbi samawati wal ardi wa ma the Lord of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. As humans, we have no access to this attribute. The only way to understand, as I mentioned earlier, this attribute is through examples and metaphor. So let's take one more example. So for example, a baby is unable to feed itself without the help of its mother. The mother can produce milk for the child. However, there is no cause for a mother to give milk because there is a hungry child needing nourishment. That baby could be crying all day long. There's absolutely no reason. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has filled the hearts of mothers with love for their child, a love so great that they will provide nourishment out of love for the child and not just because the child needs nourishment. So the crying baby alone, no. That love is so strong that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has baked into each mother that it's what drives them to provide nourishment. The mother alone is not sufficient for the child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given mothers the ability to nourish the child by producing milk. Therefore, through the mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the means for a child to be nourished. And a child is unable to be sufficient with its mother alone. So a mother can be a means for a child to reach sufficiency once its hunger has been quenched. However, the child needs to know how to receive this milk. And this knowledge of collecting milk from the mother is not something a child is taught by the mother. It is knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the child at birth. Without this knowledge, the child will not know what to do and may never be able to nourish itself. Therefore, we can say that the action of receiving nourishment by the child would not be possible without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the child consumes the milk, the child's stomach can then process this food and provide the means for the child to become sufficient. So the child's hunger is satisfied and the child is good to go. The child or the mother alone are not sufficient themselves, nor can they be sufficient without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, today I briefly touched on three of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Hafiz, Al-Muqid, and Al-Hasib. Anytime we learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran or the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are bringing ourselves closer to our creator or making the intention and taking the action to bring ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are working towards elevating ourselves in this world and the hereafter. Let's remember that this world, like all things Allah has created, is going to end someday. And one day, the angel Israfil will blow the horn once and everything in this universe will lay flat, even the mountains. And the second time, the angel Israfil blows the horn, then everyone will rise up and walk towards uh, you know, their judgment. And one day we will find ourselves in front of our creator being judged for our action. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us guided by allowing us to emulate these attributes in our lives as best as we can. And where we cannot emulate, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the knowledge and the wisdom to understand our creator better, to understand how we can learn not just about ourselves through these metaphors and through these examples, but also about our communities and the people around us. Because ultimately, um, we all have hopes and dreams. It doesn't matter which culture we come from. It doesn't matter what faith we belong to. Every single one of us on the day of judgment is going to be judged, despite our background, despite the, about the, you know, despite the color of our skin, despite our differences in opinion, we all will be judged. So it's important for us to keep in mind that the person sitting across the table the person sitting across the world in our community down the road, even though they may be Muslim or non-Muslim, is another person that Allah has created, is another person with hopes and dreams, is another person with the mind and an intellect to be able to rationalize things. And given the opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, can that person's heart be open up? So inshallah, may Allah give us that opportunity to be that vessel, be that agent of change, be that 
agent that causes other people to receive the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we ourselves become better and we as ourselves seek to receive that knowledge and that information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become you know, better versions of ourselves. I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. May we all find strength to stay firm on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. For he subhanahu wa ta'ala is oft forgiving and most merciful. And O oh Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. O oh Allah, bless us with pious spouses and offsprings who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. O oh Allah, please have mercy upon our parents and the believers on the day of judgment. Forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. O oh Allah, please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to you and protect us from those who lead us astray intentionally or intentionally for shaitan is the open enemy to us all and oh allah please guard our health the health of those who we love and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community who are indeed rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata aina wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana wa kafir anna sayyiatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar rabbi ja'alni muqimas salati wa min zurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal du'a ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا واليك انبنا واليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنه للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا انك انت العزيز الحكيم ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني اذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون I mean, at this time, my dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to conclude this khutbah. To all of you, I, I wish a blessed Jum'ah. May you have a wonderful weekend as well.